Internal developer platforms and portals are becoming a growing trend. In this video, I'll show you how to enable developers to easily deploy applications with Backstage on the front end and Argo CD working behind the scenes. This video demo is designed to show you the power of a GitOps-driven workflow, making your development cycle faster, more predictable, and in harmony with the infrastructure laid out by platform engineers. This is part two of a two-part series of videos. If you missed part one, I highly recommend that you go watch that one first. Let's get started. Let's take a look of the workflow that we have here. Once again, we have Backstage as our front end, our internal developer portal. And in here, we have a Go API template that we created in the previous video, if you remember, the platform engineers nicely created this template for us developers to consume. So as a developer, I'm going to start by calling on this template and giving it the specifications that I need, the parameters that I need. And then from here, once that happens, I, as a developer, don't know what happens behind the scene, but I'm explaining to you as a platform engineer, what happens behind the scene. This will kickstart a GitHub actions workflow. And what that will do is it's going to call on Argo CD that lives inside of my infrastructure Kubernetes cluster, and it's going to create an Argo CD app. Then what happens is within my GKE cluster for apps that we created again, in the previous video as platform engineers, what's gonna happen is Argo CD is gonna go ahead and deploy my Go API into this cluster and it's gonna be a ready to go deployed application. And not only that, there's gonna be a new repo that's gonna get generated and it's gonna be given to our developers. They can take that scaffolded application and, uh, and start to develop more. And whenever they make a change inside that repo and push it, that will trigger an automatic deployment through Argo CD using GitOps principles. So that way their application is continuously getting deployed and they're happy. Everything goes quickly. They don't need to submit a ticket. It's self-service. All they needed to do is go to backstage and launch a template. Let's watch a demo now and see how all of this takes place. This is a quick announcement that I'm working on two new courses. One is Backstage 101 and the other is Crossplane 101. They're both a work in progress as of this recording, but maybe by the time you watch this video, they'll be ready to go. You can always check the TechAnade Academy site at techanade.com slash courses or sign up for my newsletter on the techanade.com website to get all the updates. Now let's continue with our video. Okay, so we are now in Backstage once again, and we can go to the Create button. Here we're gonna see our new Go API template that was created for us by the platform engineer. I'm now putting on my developer hat, okay? So let's go ahead and choose that. We're going to use our owner username for GitHub. I'm going to choose another repo here. This will be for my application. And I'm gonna click next. Give it, give my API a name. So I'll call it Go API and Go API for the container image. I was wondering whether I should have this as one or separate it. I decided to separate the two, so it doesn't really matter. And then I'm gonna go ahead and review. You can see the new repo that's going to get created and hit create. And from a developer perspective, I just sit back and wait until my application is deployed. I see that my, I have it registered in my catalog. So if I open my catalog, I'll see that I've got my application here and the source code right here. And if you notice at the bottom, I have the Argo CD overview here. It says failed. This is just because it hasn't been created yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay here waiting until this turns green. You'll see it in just a little bit. And that will tell me that basically my application has been successfully deployed. I can take a look at my source code here. This is the new repo that got deployed or got created. And in here, I have a few things that what you can see. I've got a main.go application ready to go, a go.mod. 
a catalog. This is what I've registered into my application, into my inside of, inside of Backstage. Here's a Docker file that's ready for me. And this is the Docker file that gets used to deploy the application. And the deployments, I have just one Kubernetes manifest right here. As you can see, it has a deployment and a service. The deployment has two replicas. And I have this label here. This label is important. These two labels are important for the Kubernetes resources to show up inside of Backstage. So the, the service you'll see will show up and the container and also the, the deployment, they're all going to show up inside of Backstage, which I'll show you once it's deployed. The service here is of type load balancer. So it's going to create a load balancer for us in GCP. And that is pretty much it. It's calling on my image here. And this image is inside of Docker Hub. And I don't need to worry about all this as a developer. This deployment gets taken care of by Argo CD. And that's it. So if I go back to a backstage and let's see if I refresh here, see if this is ready. And it is ready. So we can see here our Go API, it's synced, it's healthy. If I click here, you can see the repo URL that we just saw and the destination server. This is the GKE API URL. Destination namespace is Go API. And, uh, and this is the image that I used. Really don't care too much about this. Just wanted to show you what that looked like. And then from a Kubernetes perspective, I can click in here and I can see my cluster. This is the cluster we're using for our applications that the platform engineering team created for me ahead of time. And as I mentioned before, because of the labels that we saw in the deployment, I can now see my pods inside of the deployment here. My two replicas are up and running and everything looks great. And here's my service. I can see the ingress here, or it's in this case, a load balancer. And uh, if I open this, take this URL and open that up in a new browser window, and just wait a little bit here, I can see my app is up and running, ready to go. You can see hello world, this is your Go API speaking. So that is absolutely wonderful. Now let's say I wanna make a change here and push it back. Uh, there are multiple ways of doing this, of course. I would go in here and make a change to the main.go. And from here, I would push it or actually use the Docker file that I have here. I would run Docker build, for example, and then Docker push to the repo. And what will happen is I'll add a new tag. And from here, I can dynamically change the tag here and that will get Argo CD to, to look at the changes that happen here. Since there's a new tag here, it will redeploy my application once again in the cluster for me. I'm not going to go through this scenario. You can do it yourself, find a way, use GitHub action or whatever CICD pipeline that you're using. Just know that Argo CD is monitoring the deployments folder for any changes that it sees here, and it will redeploy the application for you uh, directly. Let's now take a look at the Go API template. Now I'm taking off my developer hat, putting in the platform engineering hat to show you the configuration. So this is found in the backend under templates and Go API. Here's our template.yaml file, very similar to the one we did with the GKE, the GKE cluster. So the parameters I'm using is the repo URL that's going to be used for the new application, the Go API. And from here, we can see the API name and image name. I've separated them out in case you want the API name to be different from the image name. So you can fill that out here. And then from here, we have the steps. So we're fetching the base, we're fetching the content. And inside this content folder, I've got my, my catalog, my Docker file, go.mod, the main.go. And I've got my deployment folder, right? So this is scaffolding out this Go API for my developer to be able to use that. And this will be the way or the standard way we're going to use to approach a Go API application. All right, so 
we're here we're going to publish once. Uh, by the way, we're, we're feeding in some parameters as we saw before into the content folder. And uh, we're going to use that somewhere. Let's say, let's see where we're using this. We're using it in probably our deployments. Yeah, in our deployments here, it's templatized. So we're using that information in here. So back to our template, we're publishing now the repo. And then finally a GitHub action that goes out and uses the Kubernetes cluster. So it's specifying to the GitHub actions, the different parameters we're sending this out to, and it's specifying the actual Kubernetes cluster that we're going to use to deploy our application. So the platform engineer needs to change this to make sure it's pointing to the cluster that we just created in the previous video, that GKE cluster. Then we're registering this component and we're outputting the repository and the catalog where this component now lives. Okay, so that's it for the template. Next, we'll take a look at the GitHub action. And now here is the workflow, GitHub workflow that got triggered by Backstage template. We have a bunch of inputs that we sent to sent from Backstage. And here we are doing a little bit of cleanup on the repo URL for Argo. We got that done. And then we're checking out the repo or the application is where the Docker file lives. From here, we're building and pushing the Docker image to Docker Hub. And then we're checking out our normal code and installing Argo CD CLI, logging into Argo CD, registering our repo and doing some checks here. And then finally deploying the API, the Go API using Argo CD with the Argo CD app create CLI command. Uh, once again, the most important part is where Argo CD will look for the inside the GitHub repo, inside of the deployments path. And the destination server is that Kubernetes cluster URL for Argo, which is the GKE cluster that we created, as I said before, in the previous video, the destination namespace is the, is, is the API name that we're creating here. And we're creating that namespace equals to true. And that will go ahead and build our application through Argo CD for us. We can also delete the application altogether with the repo. The first thing to do is unregister it. So you can go to the top here in the component, in case you don't know where I am, under components, go API and unregister this entity. All right. And then under create, I created another template called destroy an app with repo. So if you choose that, you just need to specify the repository here and the name of the API and click review, create. That's going to go out and once again, create a GitHub action this time to destroy it. And it's going to go out and, re and remove everything for us. So if quickly, I show you what that looks like. This one here. So if I go make this bigger and go to the app destroy YAML, the jobs here, we're going to install Argo once again and run the Argo CD app delete to delete it from Argo CD. And then from here, we're going to extract and construct the repo URL, <clears throat> unregister the repository from Argo CD as well. And then finally, we're going to delete the GitHub repository by calling the API, the GitHub API. So that should take care of everything for us. And if I go into Argo CD, I see that's already been removed and that repo should also, should also be removed, which is this one here. If I go here and click that 404, it's, it's also gone. So that's just a quick way to clean up one note I will bring up is that this took me about 30 hours worth of work to get things working with backstage and everything else. Backstage is not simple. There's a lot to it. You have to work on quite a few things to get it to do what you want it to do. Everything I've been doing so far, I haven't done any plugins. I'm trying to work with what's out of the box and following the instructions in their documentation.
I'll have to say it is quite involved. So if you are up to the challenge, go for it. Otherwise, I'd recommend going for a commercial solution such as Mia platform, which I just partnered with. I'm excited to share about that more in subsequent videos. In closing, we saw how we can use a GitOps approach for both the deployment of our infrastructure as seen in our previous video and the deployment of our applications as we saw in this video. We saw how platform engineers can help create a self-service portal for developers to speed up their workflow and reduce the need for tickets going back and forth, which is really the essence of platform engineering. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.